fact, I like Totos. Hi, I'm Griffin Johnson, What's the up, armchair historian. Mentioning the Vietnam War is one of the fastest ways to spark controversy in any military history community. Mm, Opinions will rage back and forth about whether or not the USA was justified in its intervention, what mistakes it made, and if America really ever had a chance of victory. But while topics such as these are very common, what is much less talked about is the perspective of the Vietnamese people during the conflict, their motivations, the agenda of their leaders, and how they endured nearly 20 years of bloody, vicious guerrilla warfare. This video Tw will seek wait, to explain- 20 years? 20 years? That shit went on for 20 years? Motherfucker! Hold up, I gotta grab a soda. 20 fucking years. Yo, are you kidding me? 20 fucking years, man. That is absurd to me. That is... That is absurd to me. ...their side of the story, as well as provide context for the stubborn spirit of resistance that enabled Vietnam to hold out against the American juggernaut despite all efforts to beat them into submission. Supporting our sponsors is the best way Ooh. to support our channel. Today's video is brought to you by Con Conflict of Nations. Conflict of Nations. How the fuck did I know, motherfucker? I actually have this game. Look, hold up. Let me just buy, buy. Uh, buy, right here. Conflict of Nations. Boom. Alright, I win. I can skip the ad now. is only available for the next 30 days right, so click the link in the description below choose your country and start fighting your way to victory now to understand the attitude of the vietnamese during the war one must first be aware of vietnam's well, well, history of occupation well, and exploitation this. by foreign powers First, there was China, which spent a thousand years trying to absorb the nation through both conquest and cultural assimilation. However, yeah, by the 19th century, China was undergoing it. its own negative experiences with colonialism, as powerful European empires began expanding into Asia and destroying the old status quo. Bruh, you know with what Chinese game I miss? influence I miss, on the uh, wing, it seemed as if it. Vietnam might have a chance to stand on its own, but a small squadron of French warships would promptly crush those hopes. Unable to resist this technologically superior foe, the Win Imperial Dynasty, oh, ruling Vietnam at the time, quickly capitulated. And by 1884, most of Vietnam had become part of the Greater Colonial Union of French Indochina. What? With the Win Court reduced to a puppet administration, oh, okay. colonial governors that. operated with virtually no oh, oversight got, from the it. French state and were allowed to use any and all means at their disposal to suppress any hint of native resistance. Often this extended to the point of criminalizing the mere act of identifying oh, oneself me. as Vietnamese. What? Really? Trapped in a thoroughly yeah, miserable kind of existence, the Vietnamese peasants were desperate for a savior, any savior. But after decades of failed revolts and horrific reprisals, the iron grip of colonialism remained as strong as ever. Yet unbeknownst to the peasantry, the seeds of a new revolution were already being sown, not in the plantations or even in the courts of the Win bureaucracy, but in the coffee houses of Paris, where the few Vietnamese lucky enough to scrape together enough money to afford a Western education were debating the merits of a strange radical new ideology known as communism. Communism. Unlike any political ideology at the time, communism promised freedom and equality for those laboring under the yoke of capitalistic imperialism, and so spread like wildfire from the moment it was introduced from overseas, becoming Vietnam's dominant underground political movement ah, by the see. early 1930s. Communism. Central to the communist movement in Vietnam was the unassuming son of a disgraced bureaucrat some. called Win Sing Kong or as he is more commonly known, Ho Chi Minh. 
After leaving Vietnam sometime in the 1910s, Ho Chi Minh drifted around Europe, visiting both the United States and possibly Britain. As early as 1918, he was a dedicated anti-imperialist, joining the group of Vietnamese patriots, which petitioned the French government for independence during the Treaty of Versailles. In 1920, he was one of the many communists avidly following the progress of Vladimir Lenin's October Revolution in Russia, the success of which proved beyond any doubt that the imperialist system could be overthrown through force of arms. Inspired by Lenin's success, Ho Chi Minh chaired the first meeting of what would become the Indo-Chinese Communist Party, or ICP, in 1930, with the express goal of ending colonial rule of his native country. But for all of his early efforts, regime change in Vietnam would not originate with the Vietnamese, but would instead be instigated from the most unlikely of sources, Imperial Japan. In 1940, Japan invaded Vietnam as part of their efforts to establish the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere, or in other words, a series of client states under imperial domination. In 1945, they officially annexed the country and expelled all Western influences, including the entire French colonial administration. Mere months later, the Japanese surrendered to the Allies, and with their collapse, Vietnam's century-old political order had come crashing down, leaving total chaos in its wake. I'm gonna be honest, I haven't paid attention at all. It was during Is this last chaotic year of the occupation that Ho Chi Minh truly came into his own as leader. He had oh, returned to Vietnam in 1941 yeah. to organize a major resistance movement against Japanese forces known as the Viet Minh. And by 1945, he was Viet leading Minh. an army of at least 10,000 communist guerrillas. His long-awaited revolution began on August 15th, before even the ink on the Japanese instrument of surrender had time to dry. With the French colonial forces in Vietnam having been disarmed by the Japanese earlier that year, there was a brief window in time where the Viet Minh had free run of the entire country. But far from screaming defiance at the hated Western imperialists, Ho Chi Minh was instead positively desperate to secure a friendship with the United States. This was due in large part to the activities of the U.S. Office of Strategic Services, or OSS, which OSS, had made contact with the Viet Minh in 1945 and selected Ho Chi Minh as their primary contact within Vietnam. Nice. Part of what enabled the close relationship between America and the Viet Minh was their lack of a traditional communist agenda. Despite Ho Chi Minh's unabashed belief in the ideology, his primary goal was always the liberation of Vietnam. As he himself stated, at first patriotism, not yet communism. As a result, both Joseph Stalin and Mao Zedong initially distrusted Ho Chi Minh for his unwillingness to make class warfare a priority above national freedom. This, however, struck a chord with American observers, who were naturally sympathetic to the idea of an oppressed nation throwing off the shackles of a domineering imperialist regime. Yeah, Thus, OSS yeah. operatives celebrated alongside the peasantry when Ho Chi Minh declared the Democratic Republic of Vietnam on September 2nd, 1945. In his opening speech, he began with words familiar to every American. Yeah. Behind him on the podium stood OSS Major Archimedes Patty, and as the speech came to a close, a plane bearing U.S. markings flew over the assembled crowd, which greeted its appearance with thunderous applause. All across the nation, Americans were seen as heroes and liberators, and for a moment, it seemed as if this would be the start of a glorious new relationship between East and West. Of course, we all know that this was never really an option. The French wanted their colonies back, and the newly elected President Truman had no interest in cooperating with an openly communist regime. 
After negotiations with the French broke down completely, the Vietnamese had no choice but to fight for their independence. And the first Indochina War began on December 16, 1946. During this time, the Win Dynasty attempted to reassert its control over the nation, with the 13th Emperor, Bao Dai, siding with the French and resuming his place as a puppet ruler over their occupied territories. As the war dragged on, the U.S. began sending aid to the French, but after their dramatic defeat at Dien Bien Phu in 1954, they agreed to new negotiations with the Viet Minh. The ensuing treaty split the country in two halves, the DRV in the north and the State of Vietnam in the south. Oh, there's Vietnam. Bao Dai was then unceremoniously ousted by his prime minister, No Dien Diem, after a referendum determined that the State of Vietnam should become a republic. However, this was hardly a triumph of democracy over imperialism, for Diem was utterly corrupt, and the referendum was blatantly rigged. Diem even went so far as to deliberately ignore the French promise that the South would be allowed to vote on whether or not to reunite with the North under the DRV. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means, I'm being honest. When it became obvious that the Diem had no intention of allowing reunification, DRV-backed insurgents began popping up all over the South, causing him to become even more anti-communist, and in turn causing America to offer increasing amounts of aid to his administration. However, Diem proved to be a fickle ally, often refusing to cooperate with his U.S. backers, especially in regards to rural development and land management. In 1963, Bro, tensions finally video. came to War a head when Diem was abruptly assassinated in a military coup d'etat that was aided by the CIA. All right, here we go. This, combined with the Gulf of Tonkin incident in 1964, paved the way for a full-scale U.S. invasion. Oh shit! From this the outset gets, of war, Vietnamese crazy. generals knew that a conventional victory was impossible. America was simply too powerful to defeat using traditional battlefield tactics. But the huge rural population really? of the South was already mostly under the sway of the DRV-backed National Liberation Front, or more commonly known as the Viet Cong, or VC. The, the VC, Cong, in combination man. with the People's Army of Vietnam, waged a successful series of campaigns against the disorganized South Vietnamese until large numbers of American troops began arriving in 1965. Following American involvement, the conflict began to shift into a war Yo, of attrition. What the fuck? Vietnamese defense strategy revolved around their extensive network of tunnels, which many likened more to underground cities than mere military strongholds. What Over 200 fuck? miles or 321 kilometers of tunnel were dug during the war, with the largest system Bro, no at Kuche being just 20 miles or 32 kilometers outside Saigon. Their importance was summed up in the words of Colonel Chao Lam. We knew the Americans were determined to find and destroy the tunnel system. They understood, as did we, however Kuche went, so did the war. It was our determination not to lose even one centimeter of the tunnels. It was a contest of wills, resulting in some very fierce fighting. We made God a tremendous damn. sacrifice to gain victory. Holy Two years shit, after its arrival, the United States of America expanded its bombing campaigns across North Vietnam in an effort to break their will to fight. When a North Vietnamese civilian saw the first B-57 bombers open their bomb bays over his home province of Quang Minh, his first thought was not to flee in panic, but was instead, why is a mother airplane dropping baby airplanes? Having miraculously survived the initial attack, he gathered his family and fled for the nearby caves. He later Jeez, recalled to a journalist, man. people didn't talk about the meaning of the war. We were really confused why the Americans tried to invade our homeland. We hadn't done anything to them. Sadly, the citizens of Vietnam had much more to fear than American bombs. When oh, Viet Cong guerrillas went to ground among the rural peasantry, U.S. forces responded by declaring any villages with a suspected VC presence as free fire zones. 
Then came the infamous Mi Li Massacre on March 16, 1968, when at God least 347 damn, unarmed civilians were brutally executed by American soldiers. 300 Although the heroic actions of a U.S. helicopter crew saved a few innocent lives, most were not so fortunate and Mi Li would go on to become known as the worst war crime ever perpetrated by U.S. soldiers in Vietnam. As traumatizing as the war was for the civilian population, it was arguably just as bad for the Vietnamese soldiers on account of how long most were expected to serve on the front lines. Le Cao Dai, head of surgery at a military hospital, later recalled, when we were called to go south, everyone was very excited. As it turned out, while I only planned to stay for six months, I ended up staying for eight years. God damn, Given six these extended deployment times, years, Vietnamese quick, soldiers quickly became hardened to the horrors of war and had little mercy for any Americans unfortunate enough to fall into their grasp. American pilots were especially loathed due to their indiscriminate bombing campaigns, and many were tortured to death after they bailed out over Vietnamese territory. Monka S, bro. He slimed me. Holy shit. Yo, that's fucked up, man. To keep their this populace motivated insane, and stave bro. off the effects of war weariness, the DRV maintained strong and effective propaganda campaigns throughout the conflict. The mastermind behind these campaigns was Vo Win Zop, a renowned military leader who had fought alongside Ho Chi Minh since the 1940s. People quickly formed long queues to purchase his newspapers and listen to loudspeaker broadcasts about the latest developments on the front lines. With minimal access to international news, the people of the North were easily swayed by party rhetoric and quickly came to regard the war as a necessary and righteous struggle against yet another imperialist aggressor. God by contrast, damn. the urban population of the South could listen to foreign news reports and had a much more conflicted attitude towards the violence tearing apart their nation. The success of the Vietnamese propaganda machine was demonstrated following the Tet Offensive of 1968, which caught U.S. forces completely by surprise. Amidst the chaos, VC infiltrators launched an attack on the American embassy in Saigon, penetrating the compound and opening fire on the Chancery Building with rocket-propelled grenades. Although the building withstood the assault, the fact that such an attack had occurred at all was psychologically devastating to the USA, proving yeah, that not bet. even the capital city of South Vietnam was safe from communist infiltration. The Tet Offensive also brought the reality of war to the urban population of the South, leading many to lose confidence in the Western-backed government. By the what early 1970s, Unlimited the endless rocket. jungle warfare had taken their toll on both sides. But the DRV remained defiant, while U.S. morale had plummeted to the point where soldiers were openly ignoring orders and deserting in record numbers. Desperate uh, to at yeah. least preserve the status quo, America began pouring resources into strengthening the South Vietnamese army while pulling out its own traumatized troops out of the conflict. But it was too little, too late. And in 1975, a massive offensive by the DRV known as the Ho Chi Minh Campaign smashed through the defenses around Saigon and decapitated the Republic. After almost 20 years of war and millions of deaths, Monka the DRV X, finally bro. stood triumphant. Against all odds, communism had won. Bro, holy shit. Or had it. While the sacrifices made by the North Vietnamese during the war allowed them to survive and eventually reunite with the South, the conflict would leave millions on both sides scarred for life. Furthermore, despite the expectations of the international community, communism failed to spread throughout Southeast Asia after the fall of Saigon, rendering decades of U.S. obsession with the domino theory utterly pointless. Despite the wow. repeated entries of Ho Chi Minh and extensive years, testimonies pointless. by OSS operatives in the 1940s, America never fully I... grasped that it was the desire for liberty, not communism, that motivated the North Vietnamese to fight on against the odds. Their support of the corrupt DM administration only kind of furthered up, this rift in understanding, and the resultant two decades of violence opened up a deep, 
national wound between North and South that has yet to be fully healed. That is insane, man. Thanks again to okay, our- Okay, really? Come on, fucking hashtag ad. Yo, that- This is a fucking good-ass video, man. That's two good-ass videos. The armchair historian, man. Goddamn. Goddamn, goddamn, man. Not bad.